Greetings folks and welcome back to the Shelter Channel. Today we are going to start kind of a series of going through little things that I am bringing, not, little, not necessarily little, not like size really matters in this regard, but things I'll be taking with me on my trip. It's kind of like a packing list video, but not really like any packing list video you've seen, I promise you that much. I'll be going through, in each video, different pieces of the kit rather than one exploded look at what I'm taking with me, at least not in this series. Maybe I will do that before I leave if I run out of ideas for other videos, but I'm um, just trying to give you some uh, some uh, content before I take off and I'll be gone for four weeks and hopefully I can drop it while I'm gone. So if you're seeing this now, chances are I'm dead. But if not, I'm on the Camino. Okay, so well, I mean, before I even get into it, maybe we should go into the intro. Yeah, I think we should take the intro. Take it. Take it? Do it. Do it? Hit it! And welcome back, folks. So, what I want to focus on looking at today is um, the feed bag. Yeah, not, not that type of feed bag, but this type of feed bag. This is, you've seen this in other videos, maybe the dry bag video I did. I featured a bunch of different bags and styles and types, and I believe I showed you this one. Uh, this is by Osprey. It's, it's kind of a cool bag. Uh, you can put some clips on here, some carabiners on both these loops, and hang it across your chest, too, if you wanted to have a a bag in front of you all day long. Some people have done this. Then you could wear it on your hip too, like an impromptu um, DIY hip bag, bum bag, if that's your thing. That's not my thing. I personally use this particular model for, and I'll, I'll have a link below if I can find it online of what this is, what the model is. I think I'm getting bit by something. It's just a very versatile bag that I happen to use for food items. I know, I know. Spain's the first world country they have everything. <laughs> Anytime someone said that to me, I just cringe because while stuff is available, you're in the back roads, you're, you're visiting these small villages, medieval villages might I add, with small general stores with some dry goods and some, maybe some odds and ends, but you can't find everything where you're going to be in Spain. So keep that in mind. So it's okay, we will not judge you, at least I won't judge you, for bringing some things that you probably, more than likely, 100% promise you, will not find in Spain. So that said, my little disclaimer, these are things that I bring with me. Now, I might be a little excessive here. This is what always happens. I overpack before I leave, and then I have to repack and unpack and repack and unpack, and I make piles of stuff that's coming and not going with me all the live long day until I get closer and closer to leaving. So right now, this is what I'm bringing, and this is based off of what I've brought on previous trips. First and foremost, and you will thank me later for this, is this empty sriracha. It's not even empty. It's a travel sriracha tube. Now, I know you're thinking. I mean, us as North Americans, we get a bad rap that we put hot sauce in everything. Well, that doesn't come from nowhere. We do put hot sauce in pretty much everything. And even if we don't, it's good to have hot sauce while you're traveling, I think, anyways. I lived in Central America for a few years, and I found that, you know, adding lemon juice to my water and hot sauce to my food kept the bichos, the parasitos, out of my belly. I was no longer eating for two. I was eating for me. And if I'm being straight, that means parasites or other unwanted critters in your gut. So hot sauce was a, a sure way of killing them off, as was lemon juice to the water. But I'm, I, I digress. My point is, is the food, this is another thing you hear over and over again in the forums and the groups. Spanish food, the cuisine, oh. Delicious. Michelin five-star restaurants, blah, blah. I don't know where these places were. They're not on the pilgrim menu, I can promise you that. And even when you eat off the pilgrim menu, I didn't find the food fam fabulous. I didn't find it awesome, I didn't find it epic. Uh, call me spoiled, and uh, you know, I don't care, that doesn't bother me, but I just want to be honest with you, is the food that you'll be eating every day, at least that I found after doing a couple Caminos, is kind of bland. Uh, the tortilla, it doesn't delineate from restaurant to restaurant, it almost tastes it's like the same person is making the same tortilla day in and day out. And while they're delicious, and I love them, they do get a little boring, so I recommend bringing some hot sauce with you. That, though, is something you can pick up in Spain. But, you know, again, I know as North Americans we have our favorite brands and whatnot, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sickos. So if you do, you can bring it in something like this. Often these brands will sell little packets, sample packets as well. Or you can raid Taco Bell or any one of these Mexican restaurants with the packets of hot sauce. Grab a handful of those. 
And again, thank me later because the tortilla, it gets, it gets boring after a while. The food gets boring. So you want to kind of sex it up, if you will. And spices are a great way of doing that. But yeah, again, I, I wasn't really impressed with the food. Now, don't, don't come down on me. I know, you know, if you, if you mention that in certain groups, you will get trashed. I don't know what you're talking about. The food's delicious. I don't know what you people eat regularly when you're back home, but I tend to leave. I'm a cook. I cook. I like to cook. I, I like interesting food. I, I'm, I'm also a vegetarian. So, I mean, like, and I was a vegan for years before that. So, I have, like, certain things, dietary limitations, if you will. And Spain does not provide for that. They don't even really know what vegetarianism is. They, yeah, I'm not even going to get into that. Or veganism. They, now, now know that I'm kidding. You don't have to attack me. It is difficult to find or to eat vegetarian on a menu there. Whereas in England, England, the UK, they understand it. Every menu is loaded. It's not like a unique thing to see a vegetarian or a vegan offering on a, a menu in England. It's like, it's welcomed. In the United States, it can even be difficult, but not as difficult as it is in Spain. So if you're a vegetarian, I mean, you're gonna have a little bit of an issue. You're gonna have to do a little bit of your homework. Uh, there are some restaurants that cater to that. There are some uh, supermarkets that where you can buy certain things. You can find tofu every now and then, but it, it, it's gonna be difficult. It's not gonna be a leisurely walk across Spain. You're gonna be doing, well, I've been sitting down for wine looking at the menu, you're going to be at the supermarket trying to find something you can eat and maybe bring back to have with your wine. So, yeah, no upfront, the food is not delicious, it's not mind-blowing. Even the paella, I've had better paella than it's just, again, I'm not complaining. It's where I was in Spain, maybe. I don't know. The paella, I'm pretty sure was frozen paella that they were heating up. I don't, I don't know. But the pillion menu is cheap, so you're going to get cheap food with that. Granted, I do appreciate it, and I'm very grateful for it, but I just want you to know, going in, I am grateful. I just am not impressed by the food. <laughs> so hot sauce, that's my long winded way of saying at least bring some hot sauce or packets of hot sauce. These will go a long way. Keep them in your food bag. And when you sit down for tortilla, you'll be ready every time. Now, another thing is seasoning. Again, I like to cook. And many times on my Caminos, I will rent an Airbnb with friends, my Camino family as soon as that comes together. And I will take on the, uh, the task or role of cooking. It just kind of lands in my lap every time. So, seasoning. Now, this is what I did my last trip. I will never do this again, but this is a camping seasoning, seasoning holder. And what I found is while I was there in Spain, I was buying seasonings there for one night. It's like, oh, I gotta leave this behind. I can't carry this entire thing with me. So I thought the next time I go, I'll get one of these things. So that's, and it's falling all over me. So that's what I did, but still this is bulky, it's clunky and it can be heavy. So if you are having your uh, luggage transported or some of your luggage transported, maybe this is something to consider. That way you don't have to leave a full bottle of whatever seasonings you buy if you're cooking behind. You can actually transfer some of that into one of these camping multi seat. And this is actually small. There's another portion that goes on the bottom too, but this is the size I brought with me. But I could even just bring, you know, again, just the splitter here. If there's two, if I have two favorite seasonings or maybe even just salt and pepper. I could just bring this top part, and that's not so bad. You know, and a funny side note is if you do end up buying that one thing of oregano or curry or whatever the case may be, and you're with a Camino family, play the baton game. And what that is, is from stage to stage, whoever has that seasoning, let's say it's pepper, you pass it to the next person when you get to the next stage, the next time you see your family, and that person has to hike with it to the next stage, and they give it to someone else in the family, and it's this perpetual game all the way across Spain of the pepper baton. Yeah. It's a thing. Kind of a thing. It might not be a thing. But it should be a thing. Make it a thing. Okay. And other odds and ends in my food bag. Tea. This one is Throat Coat by Traditional Medicinals. I also have a ginger lemon tea. These are more, I'm looking at these like supplementally or, or, or medicinally. I've gotten sick on my first Caminos. Camino cough is real, folks. Especially if you're going in the springtime with the weather all over the place. And, li and sleeping and living so close to the other, other people that have just traveled from all over the world, that have gone through airports, you're gonna catch something. Well, maybe you won't, knock on wood. Both times I have, and when I get there, I'm like, now I gotta go around and try to find echinacea or zinc or whatnot. And it just adds the anxiety, adds the stress. So while people say you can buy everything you want in Spain, you kinda wanna lower the anxiety level, especially if it's you're, you're treating yourself while you're sick, because that's not gonna help you heal faster. Uh, I actually had COVID my first time. For five days, I hiked with it before I realized what it was. But it lasted about five days. So that's good. Anyway, so this time around, throat coat. Bring a couple bags of this, maybe three. It looks like I have four in here. So I plan to be sick if I'm going to be sick 
for four days. So I have enough to treat four days of sickness and uh, tea. But you can also bring other, maybe you're a tea drinker anyways. Don't bring a lot of tea. But if you want to like, you know, a, a special treat every now and then, maybe five bags of your favorite tea. It's like a hug from home. Anyways, moving on. What else do we have here? Oh, this, this, uh, this, this is gonna, this is a super pro tip. Now this may be more than I need. It's not really though. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six bags of olive oil. Hopefully I'll find more there in the restaurants, different restaurants, different places in Spain. You will find little sample size or one-time use bags or packets of olive oil. Pocket that stuff. Especially if it's like on the table in a basket. Pocket it. Don't take all of it. But take a few of them because bread is often served in Spain without butter and without oil. So it's just, it becomes almost stale. And oftentimes the bread is, I'm not going to lie to you, it's going to be a little stale. Uh, you get used to it, however, and you're very grateful again to have it in the moment. But if you can dress it up a little with some uh, fresh virgin olive oil, I don't know if it's fresh, but with virgin olive oil, it'll make the bland better. It'll make bad bread better. It'll make great bread even more badder. More badder. Bread, sorry. That joke was crummy. So olive oil. Grab a few packets to get you going and keep your eyes peeled for this stuff. In fact, before your trip, when you're going out to eat, when you're at the supermarket, because, you know, they often have like little food areas now, when you see sample stuff, salt, pepper, oil, hot sauce, ketchup, just grab a few to get you started that first week. It'll break up the blandness real quick. And once you're there in Spain, you can, you'll hopefully be able to find more here and there. But again, it it's, can be difficult. I know I did mention salt. I bring pink Himalayan sea salt with me, not necessarily for food, although it, it can, a pinch of it can go a long way. That said, a pinch of it can also go in your water bottle. This aids in hydration. When you add a little bit of salt, a pinch of salt uh, to your water, it ensures that the water is being absorbed into your system. If you find yourself peeing a lot, that's all the water you're drinking. It's not being absorbed. You need salt, you need electrolytes. So a pinch of this will go a long way and it's a lot healthier than the Aquarius drinks that are on offer there that are delicious and they're wonderful and you'll be craving them. They're a lot like Gatorade, but better. But if you look at the ingredient list, it's like, oh. uh, it's kind of like the people that have a Coca-Cola. After hiking that far, it's like, this is pure sugar water you're drinking. And I get it. The me right now is the me off the Camino being all self-righteous. But when I'm on there, it's every man for himself. So. Take what I'm saying. You hear that? With a grain of Himalayan pink salt. Anyways, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But yes, so can be used for, if you're a salt person, can be used in your food. Definitely use a pinch in your water every day, just a pinch. And if you get sick, as I'm planning to, again, knock on stone, uh, touch stone, as they say in the UK, but salt can also be used as a gargle. So if you're sick, so not only do I keep this in my food bag, I keep a packet or two in my first aid kit also yes because i'm i will use it if i need to gargle at the end of the night and it really when you're that's the first thing you notice during camino cough is the throw as soon as you feel that coming on you'll justify it not necessarily justify it, but you try to will it away being like oh clearly it's just allergies especially in the spring you'll see all the blooming flowers the rape seeds so on and so forth the poppies you're like yeah i am just suffering allergies i don't have allergies you'll tell yourself things like that but sadly, you're sick. You're getting Camino cough. That's the first sign. And as soon as you feel that in your throat, start gargling, I recommend, with sea salt. You don't need much. A teaspoon of this, some warm water, four ounces, gargle that before you go to bed. It'll it'll calm the throat, if you will. Uh, I think grandma and my mother were right when it comes to gargling with sea salt. It really does work. So, sea salt. Uh, what else we got here? Corkscrew. You will be in the land of wine. So a corkscrew, now you can depend on other people having these because chances are they will. You can also go, run into a bar or a restaurant and ask them to open it for you. They will. But if you're self-reliant, such as I am, you'll carry your own corkscrew. So I keep that in my food bag as well. Stupid log. And yeah, and you can see like stuff like pepper. Again, I probably grabbed this from the local fish and chips joint. I have this little container of pepper. It was a little container of pepper and salt that I think was at a hotel I was at. It was like a dual, but I don't really eat salt, table salt. Pepper I do, so I have a whole little thing of pepper. Keep that in here. Soy sauce. I even have a small pack of soy sauce. This is good to cook with. Again, if you're cooking at an Airbnb and you want to sex up what you're eating, a little bit of soy sauce will go a long way. Also add some saltiness. 
The balsamic glazes that you can find, they do sell balsamic glaze everywhere in Spain. So you can use that to, you know, for roasting vegetables or whatnot, just to add a little bit more flavor there because vegetables are, they're sold in all states and forms. I mean, I've seen them overripe. Again, not complaining, it's just a different culture, but really ripe, ripe, ripe. So when certain vegetables get really ripe, they either become really sweet or they lose their flavor. So you can get by by relying on cheats like balsamic vinaigrette. And if I buy a small balsamic vinaigrette, I will throw that in here too. I always look for small. Uh, I don't be carrying too much weight. And I try to use as much as I possibly can when I'm cooking. Well, not, well, I mean, <laughs> in a realistic manner. I'm not looking to uh, spice anyone out of their seats. But that is, oh, and you know, well, while you're scavenging for little packets, sample packets of salt and other seasonings, you know, pizza also comes with the little red pepper flakes when you order a pizza. Hold on to those. Don't use those. Or Parmesan cheese, whatever. Any type of flavoring that you can get in a packet form, save it. Hold on to it. And often after a dinner, especially in Europe and UK, they give you those handy wipes to clean your hands with. I even save those to use in a pinch if I want to wash my hands really quick. Those work. But also what to grab. Disposable plastic or sometimes uh, compostable uh, fork and knife. And a spoon. I have a spoon in my other other pocket of my bag. I've been using these for multiple trips. They're just plastic lightweight utensils. Now, oftentimes they will have, they will always have, I mean, for the most part, 90% of the time they will have knives, forks, spoons at any place you're eating. But if you're on your own, sometimes Airbnbs aren't fully stocked where they have, I don't know. Maybe you have more people than you do uh, forks and knives when it comes to an Airbnb. Maybe you're picnicking midway between stages, which you'll do a lot. Like this knife came in handy. Actually, this knife, believe it, I did not scavenge from a restaurant. This is actually a C to Summit. I'll actually put a link below because it is, oh, <laughs> I just broke it. Well, it was a nice quality knife. It's actually old, but the thing is, I found it on the ground while I was hiking on the Camino. Actually, now it's just smaller and weighs less. Oh, I'll keep it. But this is great because it's just stiff enough to spread peanut butter. The peanut butter, as you know, can be thick and tough to spread, but peanut butter and uh, baguettes was like, as a, you know, as a vegetarian, something that got me through a lot of it. Peanut butter was a staple. Peanut, peanut butter is also hard to find. I recommend when you're in bigger cities where you see a larger supermercado uh, or supermarket, ask for peanut butter. See if they have, uh, what do they call it? Mantequilla de maní. Look up the name for everything you think you're gonna need in Spanish and write it down or put it in your phone. So you'll be able to find it a pit in a pinch. And again, less anxiety when you will feel anxiety the most. But yeah, so spreading peanut butter, um, I would buy raisins, put it in the, in the bread with peanut butter. I make a raisin peanut butter baguette sandwich uh, often and instant energy. It was great. Kept me going strong all morning long. But hot sauce, again, really is like, that is, if you take away one thing, take away the hot sauce if you like hot sauce. I'm sure most of you like hot sauce, but that really, that blew minds too. I would, people would be borrowing it from me because Again, it just it's, it gets kind of bland after a while. This is a lifesaver, a true, true lifesaver. So that is my food bag hack. Keep everything in there. I keep it on the outer pocket, the soft pocket on the outside of my backpack. Yonder pocket right here. So it's really easy access. When I get to a bar or a restaurant, I can just reach in there, grab it, pull out the hot sauce or whatever else I need in there. Get, expect some weird looks, but and again, this will not be coming with me this time, but it might work for you. Again, if you're, if you're sending your luggage forward, consider it. Also consider passing on the pepper baton. Some pilgrims are doing that in the last one. I thought it was so cool. Yeah, I, I stole that. But I'd like to not only steal it, but also spread it. I think it should be part of the tradition. Dude. That's just where I'm at right now. Anyways, folks, thanks for tuning in. If you got something out of today's video, and I think you might have. Hot sauce. Please like, comment, subscribe. In fact, if you have your own food tips, tricks, and hacks, leave them below in the comments. I would love to hear and possibly take these ideas and use them myself because it's uh, it's a pilgrimage. I know you're supposed to suffer and you're supposed to all that jazz, but I mean, like, if you can just have a little, you know, spice up your pilgrim life and the lives of other pilgrims around you. That's how you make friends. That's how you keep them. Until next time, folks. Wink, wink, wink. wink.